Well, hello, everybody. Uh, very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody wherever you're based today. As I believe we have a truly international audience uh, who attended today's Bright Talk webinar on business transformation with DataServe and Chat GPT. This has been brought to you by AIM this morning. Uh, my name is Steve Ackland and I am CEO of AIM. Thank you again for attending. So for the next 45 minutes, uh, we're aiming to show you how new and powerful GPT technologies can be a huge beneficial transformer for an organization. But of course, one which needs to be controlled, harnessed and directed. As we know with any technology, absence of security and governance considerations for GPT are going to create risk and can cost an organization dearly, as we will have seen from some recent reports in the news. Our webinar therefore aims to show you how GPT can be harnessed safely and securely for internal organizational use. And this is done via AIM's data server automation engine and virtual assistant platform. I'm joined today by two AIM colleagues, Matt Smith and Tom Duncan. Matt is one of AIM's senior solution architects. He's product owner of the DataServe platform and very much a thought leader in next generation service delivery. And Matt will be delivering the webinar shortly. Tom, meanwhile, will be assisting me with checking for any questions that you may want to raise during the session. And just to say that if you do wish to raise a question, then please do so using the Bright Talk questions section. And obviously we'll attempt to, to raise and answer as many questions as we can at the end. Finally, as a subscriber to our channel in this particular webinar, you'll receive a link to the recording after the webinar. And make sure you look out for any future AIM webinars on a range of interesting contemporary and leading issues in the use of new technologies in automation, new uh, GPT, and also for data governance. So without further ado, I'll now invite Matt to step forward and proceed with the webinar. Over to you, Matt. Thank you very much, Steve, and thank you, Tom, for assisting me today. Uh, just a note that we do have a poll as well. Um, so this is a poll basically asking you questions about if you're looking to implement chat GPT and similar models and technologies, when are you looking to do so? So we do invite you, please, to take a look at the poll within the Bright Talk webinar. Let us know your thoughts. And then when we get to the Q&A section at the end of the demonstration, we'll let you know what everybody's thinking. So we're going to start off with some slides. I we'll try to have a nice balance between showing you slides and actually showing you the system and running through some use cases. So we'll probably spend the next 10 minutes or a little bit more just introducing the topics and talking about what we're going to show today before we then dive into the system. So I always like to start off our webinars just with a couple of questions. So it's really clear about what exactly we're talking about today. So how ChatGPT can be used in the workplace, because there are a lot of different use cases and we're going to try and sort of unpick the ones which we believe from our experience are the most useful to large modern enterprises, but also how DataServe, so our AI product, actually supports the safe, quick and effective implementation of ChatGPT. And as we're going through, um, perhaps consider these questions. So although I'm going to be talking about some use cases, you're going to know your business much better than me. So consider how you could use DataServe and ChatGPT within your organization. And then importantly, what positive change would this actually bring to your business and colleagues? In terms of the agenda, then, we're going to be starting off with a little introduction into what ChatGPT actually is. I assume that most of you will be aware, at least broadly, about what it is as you're attending the webinar. But just so we're all on a level playing field, I will do a quick introduction into ChatGPT. We'll then be moving on to the ChatGPT use cases. So there are three different um, personas that I'm going to be showing you in a demonstration later. But I want to start off with showing you some of the use cases that your colleagues are possibly already using ChatGPT for, but also what we think is one of the most useful use cases. And that's what we're going to be focusing on. We'll then move to the third part, which is the ChatGPT challenges. So this is things to be aware of when you know thinking about implementing ChatGPT within your organization. And then moving swiftly on naturally to our solution to those challenges, which is DataServe. 
So it will become clear shortly how DataServe actually addresses those challenges of people using ChatGPT natively using the, the playground that you've probably already had to play around with. We'll then move into the demonstration. So we'll, we'll spend most of our time asking questions to our virtual agents, enriching the answers with ChatGPT, um, but also showing how uh, by using DataServe, you're actually implementing ChatGPT within your overall business processes. So it's not just a case of getting an answer to a question. It's about then moving through the business process, maybe submitting a form, kicking off an automation or chatting to a salesperson, for example. And then finally, we'll move into our Q&A section at the end. Um, Steve and Tom will be looking at questions as we go through. So if there is a, a natural pause and a relevant question comes up, then they'll interrupt me and we can answer one of your questions. But we will try and mop those up, up at the end uh, with the Q&A. So what is ChatGPT? Um, this is actually, I posed this question to ChatGPT itself. And so you can see there what ChatGPT's answer is. So I'm just going to highlight some of the, the key parts there. So ChatGPT is a language model, and it's developed by a company called OpenAI. And it's designed to generate human-like responses to natural language input. And it's been trained on a vast corpus of text data, including books, articles, and websites. And it, it has been trained on a lot of the internet up until the past couple of years. So it has incredible general knowledge. And as a language model, ChatGPT is capable of understanding and responding to a wide range of topics and queries. So to boil all of that down, what we're talking about is this is an AI model that you can ask questions to, and it will give you a response. Now, that's a very sort of boiled down basic version of, of what it is, but essentially that's what we're talking about. And I'm going to be unpicking various applications of ChatGPT as we go through the session today. So these are some of the things that ChatGPT can be used for um, and similar models, because we know there's been a, you know, a, a lot of similar models created as well from different companies. We've had GPT-3 from OpenAI that's been around for quite a while now, and now ChatGPT. So we're going to be covering off, you know, generically the, the types of things that you can use this type of technology for. And you've probably already got people in your organization doing things like this. So for example, it's really good at writing emails and blog posts. So somebody within the marketing department, for example, might be using it already to try and do a marketing email. Developers love it as well. Um, you know, even some of our own development team will use ChatGPT to write code or to look at some code that they've already produced and enhance it or make it more efficient. As I said before, its general knowledge is incredible. Um, it is a couple of years out, out of date. So the last couple of years, it's not trained on, um, but it, it does have very good general knowledge when it comes to internet data. And it's also really good at looking at documents and text making things easier to understand. For example, if you've written like a, an HR policy and you want to make it easier to understand, you can feed ChatGPT that data and it can rewrite it for you. Linked to that is also its incredible translation capability. And we see a lot of use cases around this um, in our day-to-day -day business with our um, colleagues and also our customers, whereby Let's say you have a lot of different knowledge articles within loads of different systems, and you want your customers and your colleagues to interact with those knowledge articles to try and you know, work out an issue for themselves, to self-help. A lot of the times, those articles might be written in a single language. Let's say, for example, English. If you're a multinational corporation, you probably have people that speak a lot of different languages. And ChatGPT can basically allow those people to interact with your English resources, but in their preferred language. It's a huge time saver, um, and it really shows that you are you know, conscious of the, the, the multilingual nature of your business, and you're doing steps to make sure everybody's included when it comes to self-help. Now, the last one, which I've highlighted in red, is the thing that I'm going to be focusing on mainly today. And this is its first and second line support capability. And that might be a strange thing to say. You say, well, we already have people in first and second line support that deal with these types of things. But what ChatGPT and other models are really good at when you use them along with DataServe is actually freeing up service teams to do 
you know, more value adding activities than just answering FAQs and that type of thing. So let's say, for example, the question, how much paternity leave am I entitled to? That's the type of thing that ChatGPT is incredible at answering based on your actual own policies. Now, you may say, well, Matt, if it's trained on internet data, it doesn't know of my company's policies. You know, how on earth is it going to help uh, my colleagues when they have these types of questions? Well, that's where DataServe comes in. That's what we're going to be talking about today, about how DataServe can find the right data, the right resources, the right information related to your colleague's query. And it can then send that information in a safe way to be processed by ChatGPT or other models to then get a response back to that question. So you can actually start using this technology to answer things like how much paternity leave am I entitled to? So what are the challenges then of using chat GPT in what I call its raw form? So this is like the playground. I'm sure you've all seen this. People have done loads of videos on this type of thing. You may have used it yourself. This is on the basically the open AI website using chat GPT. And you can come here, you can ask a question and you can get a response back. And this is where I've asked chat GPT what it is and it's, it's given me the response. So there are some challenges with, with using it in, as I said, what I call its raw form. The first one is around security. So let's say I've written a, an HR policy and I want it to be corrected or improved or easier to understand. In order for ChatGPT to do that for me, I need to paste in basically that data and say, please rewrite this in a, a better way. And, and it will come back with it with a, a, an answer, basically, which is a re rewritten form of that policy. Now, naturally, that involves sharing potentially sensitive information. I mean, you, you might say my HR policies aren't a big deal. That's fine. But, you, you know, it, it's open to have that type of information shared with OpenAI. And you may not have a data protection impact assessment done against that that level of sharing. Um, you may not have them down as a data processor of yours. So from a GDPR and just a general governance point of view, you've, you've got an issue there possibly with people sharing sensitive information uh, with a processor that you're not officially aware of. Also, when it comes to the use of ChatGPT, ordinarily in its raw form, it doesn't have access to your company data. And so this is, as I said, where data sort of comes in, we, we can serve that information up, but it involves a lot of manual sort of copying and pasting. So if you do want something translated, you've got to grab that text, copy and paste it in to then receive the response. Um, and additionally, it's not integrated into your company's processes. So if I say, for example, um, I, I want to know how much money I can get back for expenses for like petrol expenses, for example. Um, even if you copy and paste the, the policy in there and chat GPT can give you an answer to that question, it doesn't then prompt you to, 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 you know, to what the next step is. The next step in that context, of course, could be to submit an expense claim. Um, and in the context of using it in its raw form, chat GPT isn't going to do that. There's also a certain lack of oversight and an understanding of feedback. So how useful this is to your colleagues, you just don't know. And a lot of the times people are just logging in using their personal accounts. It's not even strictly speaking a company account that they're using. So you don't know really uh, what value this investment is actually bringing to your business because you can't really see what people are searching for. Also, in terms of oversight, it may be that people are coming to ChatGPT to ask questions because your own internal knowledge bases just aren't up to scratch. And if you don't have visibility of what people are, are asking this AI about, then you can't, therefore, improve your own internal knowledge bases. Similarly, with reporting, you know, lack of visibility of reporting about how people are using it. If you've got a project in place to improve self-service adoption by 50% over the next six months um, and you know, improve the adoption of ChatGPT, for example, you do have a lack of oversight when it comes to reporting. Branding as well, of course. This is not branded according to your company's guidelines. And from an accessibility point of view, just consider as well. So people with accessibility needs like uh, sight and dexterity, for example, how they would use uh, the, the the playground here for day-to-day for -day working life. And um, 
all these are things th this isn't an issue with chat gpt that the whole point of it is that this is a this is a playground it's not meant to be used necessarily day to day in somebody's working life it is actually designed by open ai to be used at the api level by other pieces of software like the data surf virtual agent and that's where our solution comes in so on the right there, you've got a couple of screenshots of DataServ, and this has been branded with uh, AIM branding, of course. And when we link DataServ with one of these GPT technologies, we call it DataServ GPT. So what exactly is it? Well, at its core, DataServ has been built around this concept of a virtual agent. And you can see on the right hand side there, I'm having a chat with the virtual agent, which is called Amy out of the box, but it's fully configurable. So you can call it whatever you like. You can have whatever avatars you want there as well. And, you know, most companies like to have something a bit fun there to express their sort of values and, the, and their brands and, the, and that type of thing. So you can customize this to your heart's content. It's also multilingual. So the majority of the demo that I'm going to be showing you today is in English, but we do support up to 35 languages, including right to left support. So people who are using it in Hebrew, for example, get the uh, user experience that they expect from modern software when using it in their uh, native language. Um, we also support speech to text and text to speech. And this is not only an accessibility requirement to make it easier for people with dexterity needs to or, or sight needs to to use the system, but it's also a great thing to use if you're like running between trains, for example, and you've got to log a ticket or have a chat with the virtual agent. It's really useful just to be able to talk into, you know, your headphones or your phone and and get a response back. Um, what we're going to do, uh, we are going to demo that to you as well as part of the demonstration so you can hear what Amy actually sounds like uh, when they talk to us. And I'm also going to be talking to DataServe in some parts of the demonstration so you can see how it captures my voice and converts it into text. It's also very secure. So there are a couple of things I mean by that. It's a piece of SaaS software. It's hosted in Microsoft Azure. So it ticks a lot of boxes when it comes to the normal security requirements of SaaS software. But to address the secure points that we had on the previous slide, it's all around two main things, really. Only authorized data is shared with ChatGPT to be processed. So we're encouraging people to use DataServe to have these GPT-led discussions about articles and resources that we as a company are saying they can share, uh, share with OpenAI to be processed. So that sort of removes that issue of people going to the playground and just copying and pasting in whatever they want to then have those GPT-led discussions. So it's sort of predefined and vetted data that we're happy to share. So you can then do a data protection impact assessment and, and be confident that the information is, is secure and being used in the right way. The other thing as well, this is an important point when it comes to implementation, is that playground that people use, that's OpenAI's playground for ChatGPT. What we also integrate with is the Microsoft Azure hosted version of ChatGPT. So you can actually integrate with that. And that's a lot better in many respects because you've probably already got Microsoft down as a data processor. You've probably already got, if you use Azure, data protection impact assessment against that platform. And it's actually really easy to fit um, ChatGPT and other OpenAI things into your current Azure subscription plan. So you can just sort of turn it on, start using it. It's a lot easier when it comes to implementation and ticks a lot of boxes from a security point of view. We've also built data serve around this concept of automation. So it's not just about getting an answer to a question. It's about then what's the next step? Are we going to kick off an automation with another piece of software? Are we going to start a chat with a salesperson or a support person? And we have this no code drag and drop automation builder. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you um, as we go through the demonstration. Um, we also have GPT connectors, so it's really quick and easy to get up and running with a range of GPT-style technologies. We're obviously focusing on ChatGPT today, but we have a, a wider scope than just ChatGPT. Um, so it's quick and easy to get up and running with them. 
And it's also focused on this concept of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So you'll see when I search in DataServe, we actually use artificial intelligence and machine learning to get the user to the correct resource quickly. So we have this feedback mechanism where we can work out what the best resource is for that particular person um, within that particular business unit, perhaps. We can be very specific about the machine learning model there. We have a great reporting suite as well. I'm going to show you that as part of the demonstration. So again, if you're investing in this latest technology, you want to report on that return on investment, you can then start seeing what your adoption rates are for using this and hopefully start seeing ticket numbers decrease and you know release some of the, the stress and the strain on frontline service teams like IT and HR. Naturally, of course, fully branded. It's again, a no code branding builder. And what we can offer after this is if you do want to have a free trial, you can get in touch with us. We'll get a system set up for you in a matter of a, a day or two, and we will brand it according to your company. So when you log in, it, it looks like a piece of your company's software. We also are very big on accessibility, as I have mentioned it a few times already. Um, there is a standard called WCAG, and we we comply to that standard to the highest level, which is 2.2 AAA. And again, I'll show you some of our accessibility features, but we're very big on ensuring that people, whoever they are, um, whether they have uh, a sight issue, dexterity problems, they can use this software to do exactly the same thing as, as anybody else, whether that's using their voice, using screen readers, you know, using their keyboard and not using a mouse, all those different things have been built into DataServe so that you can have this accessible experience when it comes to ChatGPT. And it's also available on mobile. So there's no app, which is great because if you've got customers, you don't want them to download an app in order to talk to you. It's just um, a responsive web page. So whatever device you're on, whether that's mobile, uh, tablet, laptop, ultra wide monitor, whatever it is, uh, you can use data serve and it will uh, react and respond accordingly. And whenever I introduce data serve, I like to play this little video and it's a good way. It's a very simple way actually of explaining exactly what it does. So I'm just going to pause it in the middle while, while I talk about it. This is the without data serve approach. And, you know, naturally this is how a lot of companies are, are set up whereby you have a user community you want them to adopt self-service principles, um, you know, to reduce the, the strain on your on your frontline teams, to drive up self-service adoption. So you have you know, ticketing systems with knowledge bases, you have agent chats, you have knowledge bases like Confluence and, and SharePoint and wikis and that type of thing. And now, of course, we have all these different AI products as well. And what you find is when you start introducing all of these different things, and expecting your user community to use them, you'll probably find you'll be a bit disappointed actually in the adoption rates. And the main reason for that is choice. It, in our experience, you know, when you present a user community with all these different logins and all these different places to go, they will invariably go to the wrong place or just deem it too difficult to do self-service. So what do they do under those circumstances? They pick up the phone, they send an email, they log a ticket. What we do with DataServe is really simple. We just slot DataServe in between the user community and all of those different knowledge sources and systems. So the user community doesn't have to make a decision about what to do. They know that they can go to DataServe, search for whatever they're looking for. Because DataServe has ingested and integrated with all these different systems and knowledge sources, you've basically got a very intelligent search engine and virtual agent that's across everything in your organization. So moving on to the demonstration, um, I'm going to start off with a quick overview of DataServe, just show you what it looks like from top to bottom. Now, what I want to do is show you the virtual agent text to speech so you can hear uh, Amy in this case. Uh, the Bright Talk webinar doesn't support the sharing of computer audio. So what we've done is we've got a pre-recorded video uh, that my colleague Moran will play. So I'll do we'll do the overview. Moran will play that video, and then we'll go back into DataServe. We'll then spend most of our time on these three 
personas, these chat GPT use cases that we've got in the middle. And I just wanted to choose a range of personas that most organizations have so that you can get a feel of the types of things that they can do. So we're going to start off with an employee called Matt. We'll then go off to a customer called Sean and then a salesperson who is called Moran. And we're going to show you how they can use DataServe and ChatGPT to help them with their issues and requests. What we also have is an audience question for Amy. So I'd be really grateful if you could have a think about what questions you'd like to ask Amy. And what I'll do, it's a slightly scary moment where I then actually talk, talk your question over to Amy and, and see what response comes back. What I'm going to do is for that part, we've trained Amy on our uh, data sort of website data. So if you could think of things, questions that surround how Amy could perhaps improve things within your organization or that type of thing, um, I will ask that question to Amy and we will get a response back. Um, what I want to do as well is show you the administration console. Um, the reason for this is that if you're buying a piece of new SaaS software, uh, investing in this latest technology, you want to know that it's easy to use and you don't need a team of developers to keep it running. So I will jump into the admin console to show you that. And then finally, we'll cover off some of the other features if we have time around accessibility and mobile support. Okay, so I'm going to go now into DataServe. And what I'll do is I'll just start top to bottom and introduce uh, what this looks like and, and, what, and what this does. And then we'll, um, Moran will show you the, the little clip of, of Amy talking. We're going to focus on this intelligent search bar in the middle here. And this is where our virtual agent lives as well. It's an integrated AI search, a virtual agent uh, search bar there. Um, but as you can see, there are quite a lot of other things uh, surrounding that search bar there. It is not just a search bar on virtual agent. It's also about having this service management wrapper around everything so that you have a, a single hub for your users and your customers to come to to get updates on important events that are going on. So we have this alerts banner here. Um, we have this notification bell at the top as well. So if there's a, an issue with some sort of service and some one of your monitoring tools has identified an issue and now it's been fixed, you can broadcast that to your users so they know that that issue has been fixed. We've even got some examples of approvals here. So these are these are approvals from, from different uh, people, from different systems. And again, I've got a central hub for managing, not just searching for things and kicking off virtual agent conversations, but looking at service health, answering approvals, and that type of thing. We also have this uh, gamification engine built into it. So again, if you're investing in this type of technology, um, and it's actually going to save you money and time in the long run as a business because you're driving the shift left approach, driving up self-service adoption. Um, it's it's good to have this type of functionality in place to encourage your user base to use it. And so there's lots of different actions that you can do in DataServe. They can earn you points and badges as a user, and then you can spend them. So you might decide as a company that anybody that gets a thousand points can then trade those for you know half a day off work or something like that and it's just a way of driving up interest in the tool and rewarding your user community really for actually saving you a great deal of time um, we'll come back to the search bar in a bit because that's where we're going to spend most of our time uh, in the demonstration today um, again, we've got this service health component, so I can see the, the status of the services that matter to me. I've got a list of my tickets that I've raised. I can see their status. Um, you know, I've got social media things like YouTube videos. I've got favorited resources that I might want to come back to. We have a service catalog at the bottom for, for raising requests. So this is just an example of what it might look like for your organization. Some people go very basic and might just have the search bar. Um, where other organizations have put it across their entire service management stack, you know, you can show a lot more information to your users. So that's a quick introduction then to DataServe and what it looks like. Just remember, of course, that this is infinitely configurable. The home page layout that you have there is drag and drop. All the branding would look like your organization as well. Now, in order to hear the virtual agent, my colleague Moran is now going to kick off um, a little video just to show you what Amy sounds like.
Hi, Matt. I'm Amy. How can I help you today? What is DataServe? What a great question. DataServe is an automation platform, self-service portal and virtual agent, which is me, Amy. What else do you want to know? Thank you very much, Moran. Um, we find sometimes sharing the video can be a little bit choppy. In, in real life, it's a very smooth experience, I assure you. Um, so you can have that, that virtual agent conversation, text to speech, speech to text, and speech to speech, of course. So what I need to do now is just reshare my screen because it, it sort of takes away focus from my screen when we share the videos. So I'm going to go back, share my screen, and go back to data serve. Okay. So moving on, we're going to spend most of our time then um, on three different personas. So you can get a feel for the, the different types of things you can use data serve and chat GPT for. So we're going to start off with Matt, who is an employee, and he's got a couple of issues that he wants help with. Um, he has an IT issue to do with his printer, and he also has a HR query to do with expenses. Well, let's start off by going to our search bar here and typing in printer. What data service is doing using the AI and machine learning model is coming back with the most appropriate resources for Matt across a range of, of locations like SharePoint, Confluence, IT service management systems, etc. And so we have this guide at the top. This has been the, the highest rated guide. And we've got some advice there about how Matt can possibly fix the issue if he's able to do so. Now, of course, ChatGPT hasn't come into play yet. Um, what we can do, if Matt doesn't want to read that article, maybe it's a particularly long one, he wants to ask a specific question, all we do is wherever you see this icon, you can actually launch a GPT conversation about that data. So let's give that a click. And you'll see we then start a conversation immediately with Amy about that particular guide. Now let's start off by asking for a summary. And you see, I just earned some gamification points at the top right there for doing so. And we've had a, a nice summary from Amy about that printer user guide. I can also ask a specific question. So Matt's got an issue with a red light. So let's talk about that. There's a red light. And there you go, Amy's come back and said, if there's a static red light on your printer, it may indicate that you need more ink. You should check the ink levels and replace any cartridges that are low, etc. So that's based on that knowledge article there. We can ask a specific question and get a GPT-led response back from our virtual agent. Uh, Matt's also got a question to do with expenses. So let's come back to our search bar here. And all we're going to do to start off with is search for expenses. Again, data serves searching everywhere that it's integrated with. It's come back with a couple of resources here. We have a policy, and below it, we have a form which can be completed. Now, the policy is quite long. Matt does not have the time nor the inclination to read through the whole thing. So again, we're going to lean on ChatGPT here to help us with his question. Now, we could go ahead and click this button. But what we also have within DataServe is its own neural network and AI capability. And what we can do is assess what somebody's typing in this search bar and actually automatically launch a conversation, whether that's GPT led or not. So let's ask a more specific question. So how much do you reimburse per mile? And you'll see we've gone straight into a conversation with Amy there. We haven't had to click that button. Aim is check the HR policy in section 3.7.1 states we get 45 pence per mile. So similar to the, the, the previous example we gave with the printer, but we've gone a step further. We're now going to go and actually fill out an expense claim form. So Amy said, do you now want to log an expense claim? We've gone beyond simply getting an answer to now integrating this GPT-led conversation into our business process. So yes, we want to log an expense claim. And because data service is integrated with our HR and IT service management systems, we have access to these forms. And I can give it a click 
and I can then fill this out in the traditional way. Or because I'm speaking with our virtual agent, I can actually fill it out with the help of Amy. So we give this a click. Amy is then going to go through each question one by one. And the great thing about this is we have a lot of the latest technologies built into the virtual agent, like entity detection. So where it's saying, you know, when did you incur this expense, basically, I don't have to type in a date or make sure I say it correctly. I can actually say something like yesterday. And you'll see shortly that Amy understands what that means in the context of today. So it's to do with my car, the number of miles, 50. Additional information, I was visiting a client. And then finally, I might want to add an attachment such as my petrol receipt or whatever it might be. You'll see that Amy then summarizes what we've got. So we've correctly got the correct date in there. Everything looks good and we can then submit that request and that will then go off into the relevant system to be processed and approved. So just to reiterate, then we've gone from simply getting a response about policy to having that response about policy, but then going to the next step. What do we then do in our business process? We're being very helpful basically with, with our with our colleagues here and su suggesting what they could do next. We're now going to move to another persona, which is a customer of ours called Sean. Now she's accessing this externally, of course. So you can imagine that she's gone to the AIM website and she wants to purchase some services from us possibly. But before she does that, she wants to know the types of services that we provide. So let's type in something. Services do you offer? And again, this will automatically get a match against our neural network and it will come back with you know, the types of things that we offer at AIM. So Sean can go and have a look at these documents here. We can also launch a chat uh, to do with them. So let's launch a chat about this article here. And let's summarize what AIM does. So based on our website data, um, Amy is able to tell Sean using ChatGPT uh, the types of things that AIM offers. Um, and what you can then do is, is actually go on further. You could then um, possibly say, uh, you know, do you want to speak to uh, a salesperson? Possibly. That's the great thing about this. It's not just answering questions um, and giving a response. We then go into the next step. So you see, in this case, we've launched against the neural network. And Amy said, would you like to speak to one of our sales team to discuss your needs? Yes, indeed, I do. And then if anybody's available within our CRM system, for example, we can then have a chat with them and hopefully uh, secure a deal with our customer, Sean. So that's our second persona out of the way. And on the subject of sales, we're now going to move to Moran, who is a salesperson. And what I wanted to do now is just to show you how we're not just analyzing text and coming up with responses. Um, ChatGPT is also very good when it comes to maths. So we're going to analyze some sales data and get some summaries out uh, using data server and ChatGPT. So let's search for sales. Again, you'll see data server managed to find a sales report here. This is the top result. Just to note that these uh, figures here are for illustration purposes only for the demo. So a lot, lot of data there. And Moran needs to produce a report. So she wants to get uh, ChatGPT to help her out with that. So let's click our button again, launch a conversation about it. And we're going to ask a question. Who is the top salesperson across all three categories? And there you go, you've got Steve Ackland there, the boss with close to 12 million in sales. So what, what ChatGPT is able to do is look at all those different tables, um, 
sort of use Steve Acklin as a primary key to compare all the values that are in those tables, add them up and understand that this figure is actually bigger than everyone else's figure. So it's, it's very impressive that it can do that in addition to sort of basic text responses. Um, and then just to finish off this persona here, I just wanted to show off the, the translation capability. So let's ask another question. Give me a summary of Matt Smith's sales, but in French. And there you go. You then get Matt's sales across the three categories in French. Uh, moving on then. So we're going to cover off the audience question now. So I'm just going to refer to my colleague, Tom. Um, hopefully you've received some questions. Did you have anything that we can ask Amy about herself or data serve? Hi, Matt. Yeah, we do. We have one here. So the question I've picked out for this is, how can you help a busy HR team to reduce their workload? Okay, thanks very much for that. Um, that question then um, against our website data, basically. So let's launch a chat about that. How can you help a busy HR team reduce their workload? There you go. DaySurf can help a busy HR team reduce their workload by automating FAQs and first-line support processes. By answering policy and process questions, DaySurf can provide self-help resources to employees, reducing the number of inquiries that HR needs to handle. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I hope that was a, a useful answer that Amy provided to you there that, that covered your question. Um, I'm conscious of time, so I'm going to quickly move into the admin console to show you a couple of things, and then we're going to move into the um, Q&A section to finish off our webinar today. Um, the first thing you might be wondering is, well, how do you train DataServe or, or ChatGPT on your company's data? Um, and it's actually very straightforward. It's a case literally of having something like a knowledge article that is held in in data serve um, so for example this is the the sales report that i created earlier and you don't need to create these manually we have various connectors to things like sharepoint and confluence and knowledge bases so this can actually be ingested automatically on whatever frequency it needs to be whether that's you know every minute hour day for example so that information is then in data serve um, it's validated and vetted by the the data service system owner to make sure that we can send that information to uh, chat gpt to be processed and that's where the security element comes into it the thing i wanted to show you as well is around that expenses flow that i created earlier so this is our drag and drop automation builder and you can see the process from start to finish it's a qu quite a quick thing to build this it was about you know two minutes for me to put this together on the left hand side you have this palette with integrations so in this case we've got some graph api integrations that you can create in a no code way you have all these useful utilities like approval processes and decisions and data transformations that you can use and you also have our gpt question node and what that looks like in the software is this is where you then say this is the data that i want to, to transfer over to chat gpt to answer this question so this is where I've linked it to the travel and expenses policy that AIM has. I can even say, which question do we send? Um, in this case, it's the initial message that the person typed in that we send over. But you can even do things like fixed responses or responses that are done elsewhere within this flow. So that's very quick and easy to set up. If you imagine that that takes a few minutes, you know, spending a couple of days, you can get a lot of those conversations built are ready to be used by your, your users. And then the final thing I'll show you is around uh, reporting. So we have our adoption dashboard. You can then make sure that data serve is being used. Your uh, investment in, in AI is going to good use. You can see what people are actually ser searching for as well. Even down to the very granular raw data level, you can actually see everything that people have been searching for, the resource that they then went on to use, and what the experience of the customer is in relation to that resource. So you can actually see using our machine learning model that some of our resources are actually really useful and some of them possibly could be improved. Even down to the virtual agent conversation level, we can see that our travel expenses conversations 
and our AIM services conversations are at least average or above when it comes to user feedback. And then just before we go to the q and I did mention that if we had the time, I would show you a quick um, few seconds around accessibility. So within my profile, I can turn on, for example, high contrast mode, but there are lots of other accessibility toggles you can see in settings that appear within here. So people can customize it according to their needs. Um, and then mobile, we, we kind of covered it earlier, but if I just go into mobile mode quickly, uh, this will take a few seconds to load. All the same experience that you have within this demo that I've shown you here on the desktop, you also have on mobile. So again, if you're running between trains, you need to ask a question, log some expenses, you can do that on your mobile. So that takes us to the end of the demonstration. Um, I'm just going to bring back the presentation and let's move over to the Q&A section and uh, hopefully have you know five, 10 minutes of questions at the end. So um, over to Steve, if you wouldn't mind, and Tom to uh, field any questions that you've received. Yeah, great. Thanks very much indeed, Matt. So Tom, um, if you can find the first question, I think we've probably got time for, for, for two or three. Uh, Tom, over to you first. Sure. Uh, I have a question here, which is, um, uh, can you please confirm if your solution provides options for creation of tickets on Microsoft SCSM ticketing system? Um, and if um, languages such as Urdu, Swahili, Dari, Pashto languages are supported? Thank you very much, Tom, and, and to the person that posed the question. Yes, indeed we do. Um, so the, the basic rule with data service is anything that has an API we can integrate with. So any Microsoft product is, is a big tick in the box there, especially when it comes to access to the Graph API. There's no problems there. And in terms of languages, yes, um, we can also, but <laughs> the best way to explain this, if you imagine that the Klingon language in Star Trek, you can even create custom languages if you wanted to, um, but up to 35 languages out the box and uh, any additional languages can also be added. It takes about a couple of hours for us to go through the process of adding any languages in addition to that 35. Um, and if you'd like that full list, we can get that over to you. Um, but my, my basic principle is no languages are a problem with data stuff. OK, thank you, Matt. Thanks, Tom. Um, I will now get one. I've got one that um, gets uh, straight to the point. Uh, it says solution looks really good. Um, this, they're, they're thinking, is it very expensive though, Matt? No. That was a good question. It, it is indeed. Um, obviously, whether it's expensive or not depends on the value that you're going to get from it. So we'll always work with you to ensure that you get the biggest value and return on investment. Some people will use it in its quite basic form just to have these GPT-led conversations. We always encourage people to integrate it with their entire service stack so they do get the most value from it. Um, but if you look at a really large scale deployment, you're looking at a few pence per user per month. So naturally, you know, if, if you've got a million people in your organization, it might add up, but we do scale quite nicely. So, you know, the bigger you go, the bigger discount you get essentially. So we're very happy to uh, have a chat with you to just understand your needs, what you're looking to integrate with and, and use it, um, how many users you're looking to to have on it as well. And we can give you a customized quotation. Great. Thanks very much. Tom, question from you. Yeah, sure. So I've got a question here which reads, how can businesses ensure that the use of open AI in their self-service portal aligns with their brand voice and values? Um, what kind of customization or training is necessary to achieve this? That's a great question. Um, so the first thing I'll point out is that obviously when you're using it in this way, open AI is answering questions based on the policies that you're sending over. So usually they're going to be written in your in your voice, in your brand language, using your words. And OpenAI will generally uh, respond in a similar way because it will it will kind of look at the, the words and phrases used in your policy and reiterate them back to the, the customer or the user. But the other thing to mention is that we can customize and configure the prompt that's sent over to OpenAI. So for example, we could say, please respond to this in a very friendly way. 
or please respond to this in a very sort of you know corporate way let's say so that that's all configurable according to your needs and your your sort of brand voice so to speak okay great thank you and um i think we've just got time for one more um and this may be somebody just came into the webinar a little bit late so i think you've already covered this matt but they are looking they're talking about gpt and obviously chat gpt but they're also looking at auto gpt and uh, are interested again in terms of how you can integrate data serve with wide range of gpt technologies obviously huge proliferation as we can see uh, which are coming out but as i think yeah. you sort of already answered that but you might like just to repeat that yeah yeah no no problem at all I can cover that off um yeah so the the focus of this uh, webinar was chat gpt but we don't want you to get the impression that that's the only GPT technology that we integrate with. So again, the basic rule is anything with an API, which all of these uh, GPT technologies have, because they're actually intended to be used at the API level, uh, broadly speaking, um, then yes. So yeah, we, we, we integrate with, with all of the latest GPT technologies. So whatever you're looking to invest in, we'll have a connector for it. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions which you weren't able to uh, to table at the end of the session we'll aim to get an answer back to you uh, outside the meeting so um my grateful thanks to you matt and tom and moran for uh, delivering this webinar i hope it was of great interest to those who attended and thanks again very much for sparing your time to hear a little bit more about what uh, what aim is doing in relation to uh, the control and good governance of GPT for, for an organization's use. I hope that was of use to you. Obviously, if you have any more information you require, uh, wants a little bit of advice maybe, or to just simply to share what you're currently doing in your organization, please do get in touch. Um, and we'd be very happy to speak with you or talk to you uh, further. And uh, as Matt has put on his slide, again, if you want to see a little bit more in relation to uh, a video or a trial of the system yourselves, and of course, uh, please do get in touch as well. So just to finish off and remind you again that um, by subscribing to our channel, this webinar, you'll also get a copy of the video of the session sent to you afterwards. So um, that will come out uh, from Bright Talk. And, and hopefully, again, if there's others in your organization who are interested, you'll share with them what that video is. Please also uh, check out our channel uh, from time to time. Uh, we are planning on having a lot of uh, interesting future sessions and webinars, as I mentioned, uh, both in terms of what we're doing around automation and future service delivery, um, AI, new technologies, GPT, as well as all the interesting areas that are coming out from, from data and data governance. So be sure to, to check us out from time to time. Um, and uh, we'd be very pleased to uh, host you onto future webinars as well. Other than that, I think we're now coming close to time. So as I said, thank you again for your attendance. I hope that was of interest to you and uh, wish you well for the rest of the day. Thank you very much indeed.